Hi guys, my name is Aaron, good to see you. And I'm Anna, and today we're gonna to be talking about being an underdog. Now usually when people find themselves in this position, it's not something they're very excited about. Aaron, have you ever found yourself in that position of being an underdog? Actually, yes. So, may not look like it, but I used to be a competitive swimmer. And one year we were at nationals, and there were 70 people swimming my swim and I was ranked 45th. Now, you have to make the top 16 to move on, so I thought, there's no way this is happening, but I had the race of my lifetime and I got 15th. That's amazing, hey, good job. Uh, today we're gonna be tracking with Moses on how he went from being an underdog in the worst possible way to partnering with God in the most amazing way. Let's check out today's God story. So the coolest thing happens. Jacob, what did Jacob do exactly? Let's find out. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Carmen. Today I wanna to tell you about a time that I thought I knew where I was going without using a map. I told everyone in our car, we don't need a map, I know how to get us where we're going. Well, I bet you can guess how this story ended. I did not know where we were going. In fact, I got us so lost that at one point, I even took us down the wrong way, down a one-way street. That's when I said, guys, I give up. We need to look at a map to find out where we need to go. Turns out, once we looked at the directions, we were just around the corner from where we needed to be. But I realized there was no way I was gonna get us there on my own. Sometimes we try to do things our own way because we think we know what's best and it doesn't always work out for us. But the beautiful thing about God is he can take even our failed attempts and turn them into something for his purposes. And that leads me to today's big idea. God's way is the best way. Here's a quick recap of everything that's happened so far in the God story. God created everything. And then Adam and Eve messed up their relationship with God and they actually messed it up for all of creation. God just wants to be in relationship with his people and be close to them. So he started a rescue plan. Adam and Eve had kids and then their kids had kids and so on and so on until we finally get to Abraham. God used Abraham to start his special family. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. So the coolest thing happens, Jacob is reminded of God's promise to Abraham. And Jacob is actually renamed Israel. And then all of Jacob's family becomes the nation of Israel. The family keeps on growing. Jacob had 12 sons. That is a lot. And one of those sons' names was Joseph. Now Joseph had special dreams from God, and Joseph was actually Jacob's favorite kid, which made his brothers really jealous and actually hate him. So they sold him into slavery. Joseph went from being a slave to a ruler in Egypt. Where the rest of Jacob's family was living, remember, they're called the Israelites, they had a famine. This means there was a shortage of food. So they all moved to Egypt, where Joseph was helping to rule. He was reunited with them. He forgave them for hating him, selling him into slavery, and he was able to help them with food and a place to live. Well, years passed, and the Israelites continued to grow and grow. Eventually, Joseph died, but the Israelites just kept growing. The ruler that had put Joseph in charge of things had also died, and a new ruler came in, and he looked around and saw that the Israelites were growing in number, and he started to get concerned that they were gonna take over. So that ruler made all of those Israelites be slaves for the Egyptians. And those Israelite slaves had to work and work. And they were so often mistreated, often hurt, given hard hours, and they weren't paid with money. They were mostly just paid with food. And things were really tough for them. And the Egyptians were treating these Israelites terribly. Because the ruler of Egypt, he was called the Pharaoh, was really worried about how many Israelites there were. He wanted to make sure they didn't keep growing. So he came up with a new law. He commanded that any newborn baby boy born to an Israelite family must be killed. But don't worry, the Israelite midwives, now midwives are people who help deliver babies. They were not gonna let this happen because they knew that God's way was the best way. So even though Pharaoh told them to kill baby boys that were born to these families, these two midwives, their names were Pua and Shifra. They made sure that that didn't happen. They were kind of like heroes. Now this is why when a dad and a mom had a baby boy around this time, they they tried to hide that baby as best they could. But when the mom couldn't hide the baby anymore, because sometimes babies can get noisy, they would make a basket, put the baby in it, and hide it in the Nile River, sometimes in a bunch of reeds. Let's read what happens next. The child's sister wasn't very far away. She wanted to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile River to take a bath. Her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket in the tall grass, so she sent her female slave to get it. 
When she opened it, Pharaoh's daughter saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. This is so cool. The baby's mom wanted to save his life, so she put him in a basket and put him in a river. She never could have known what was going to happen next, but she trusted God, knowing that God's way is the best way. The Pharaoh's daughter found the basket. You remember that it was Pharaoh who made the rule that said all Hebrew baby boys had to be killed. And now it was his own daughter finding this baby. She felt so sorry for him and she rescued him. Isn't that amazing? You know what else is amazing? What happens next? Remember who was watching from a distance? The baby's sister. We find out a little bit later that her name was Miriam. So she spoke up and asked Pharaoh's daughter, would you like me to find a Hebrew woman who could feed the baby for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said, yes. So Miriam goes and gets her mom, who's also the mom of the baby. And Pharaoh's daughter says to her, here, take my baby and feed him and I'll pay you. And as the baby grew, he moved into the palace with Pharaoh's daughter as her son. And she named him Moses. And God had quite the plan for Moses. Even though there were people like Pharaoh who were trying to cause death and other problems, there were Hebrew people like Moses' mom, the midwives, Pua and Shifra, and Moses' sister, Miriam, who followed God's way. And in our lives, even when we can't possibly see how things are gonna work out, we can learn from today's story that we can trust God and know that God's way is the best way. Well, it was great to hang out with you guys today and I'm so excited to see you next week. Bye. So Pharaoh made a plan to get rid of all the baby boys in Egypt, but God also made a plan that ended up saving Moses' life. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it totally reminds me of this week's big idea, which is that God's way is the best way. Do you agree? Absolutely. I think so many times we make plans for ourselves, thinking that we know best, but if we would just surrender our plans to God's, I think we'd get a surprise or two. Yeah, and we've got a story for you from Lauren. Now, I want you guys to take notice that she had plans and they didn't exactly work out the way she wanted, but you know what? Let's just check it out. I was always an average student in high school. I never got super great grades, but I excelled in music. I grew up in a Christian home, but there's a blessing and a curse to that experience because you're surrounded by beautiful, beautiful people with wonderful relationships with God. And I found myself making their relationships with God my own. And sometimes I would find myself looking at the things I was good at, saying, wow, I'm good at a lot of things. There's a lot of things I can do. I think God wants me to go here. God wants me to go there. I realized that I wasn't asking God. I wasn't seeking God. Instead, I was just assuming where he was calling me. My first year of college as a vocal performance major was super successful. Going into my second year of college, I started to notice that I was unable to sing some of the same songs. I was going hoarse. Um, my breath support was less, so I went to a doctor to figure out what was going on. They said that I would either need surgery or I could go on vocal rest and see if it could heal itself, which for me was like a death sentence. So at that point I realized just how much of my identity was wrapped up in me as a musician. I felt like my friendships started to get rocky. I lost my scholarship because I was unable to meet the requirements of my scholarship. And I started to see that so much of my happiness, so much of my joy came from things that could so easily be taken away. And they were taken away in an instant. I was devastated. I cried my face off for like two weeks straight. I was really upset. But the reality of me is that I don't love to live in pain. I want to make a quick fix and I want to fix it right away. So I felt like I needed to completely remove myself. I wanted to go on a different track and I decided, hey, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to go to cosmetology school and learn how to do hair. And it was then, maybe for the first time in my life, that I realized that I was hungry for God. 
I think I was asking him, what do you want next? I felt like I needed to stop and not take another step before asking him where I should go. After asking God where I should be, I moved back to Minnesota, I met my husband, we have three beautiful children, and I'm experiencing God in a totally different way. Despite all of this, I felt like I still had this yearning for music in my life. And I asked God, God, how can I have music back in my life? And I felt like he said, Lauren, if you desire it, I will make it happen for you. And I felt like he gave me this beautiful wrapped gift. I love God, I love music, and suddenly there was an opening at our church that I love to be a worship leader. So I was given that position and now I get to lead worship for students at the church that I call home. Hallelujah. Most of my life, I thought that my successes are what created my path. It wasn't until my vocal injury that I realized that I am not in control anymore. I had to stop, I had to listen, and that is where abundant life happened for me. My relationship with God deepened immensely, and I was so excited to do the things that He was asking me to do. His way really was the best way for me all along. Wow, what a journey. You know, Lauren was just doing what she thought God wanted her to do. So I think it's amazing she was able to stop and recognize that she wasn't finding the fulfillment she was looking for and decided to seek God first. Yeah, she totally had a plan that was working just fine. And then God reminded her that he had a better way. And when she followed that, she not only found her voice, she found her true self. That's amazing. I think it's a great reminder for us too, that we can be successful in the many things we do, but we should always seek God's way first because it'll be better than we could imagine. Absolutely. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own stories. 